Welcome to this full body workout. You will at least need one of these resistance bands here, these loop bands for today's workout. If you have free weights like dumbbells or kettlebells, then that is awesome. And in that case, you might also want to grab a towel. I'll explain more about why we need a towel a little bit later. If you have a fitness tracker, start it. Start tracking the workout and let's get into our warm up and mobility drills. We're going to start with the world's greatest stretch. So get down into that push up position and then you're going to bring the left foot forward, ideally in line with your hands. From here, we're going to open up and we're going to reach up towards the ceiling, tracking the fingertips here with our eyeballs. Then we're going to come down and lower the left elbow down towards the ground on the inside of that left foot, so on that foot that's forward. We're going to do this a few more times up to the ceiling, elbow down towards the ground. As you do this, you see you want to keep your rear knee off the ground, up again, down to the floor, one more time. All right, place both hands on the floor again, bring the left foot back and bring the right foot forward. Again, ideally in line with those hands. If you're a little less flexible, the, the foot will be a little further back. That's okay. So from here, we're going to raise the right hand up to the ceiling now, tracking the fingertips again with our eyeballs. Then the right elbow comes down towards the ground. We'll do this three, three more times here on this side. And four, nice. From here, we get into this downward dog position. So you're raising your butt up into the, into the sky, up to the ceiling. And you're going to do extend one leg while you're bending the other, bringing the heel down towards the ground. Mobilizing the hamstrings and calves. Just keep pumping there. One leg straight, the other one bent. About 10 on each side. And then we get into our next mobility drill. All right, for that one, we're just going to sit down on the ground. We're going to be facing the camera here. We get into this 90-90 position. So I've got 90 degree in both knees, opening up the hips. You can plant the hands behind you and we're just going to switch from side to side, gluing the heels into the ground. You're just going to go back and forth. And ideally your heels would not be moving here. Just keep them stuck to the ground. Just open up that hip. We can add an element of thoracic rotation in there as well. I'm just gonna push those dumbbells out of the way. As you, uh, let me come sideways a little bit. As you come over with your right knee pointing out, you're gonna thread the needle back here. And you're gonna try to thread your arm through and really Get that thoracic rotation again. Then again, heels to the ground, switch over to the other side and thread the needle here. One more time on each side, come out here, thread the needle. And then again, I come out here and I thread the needle. All right, before we get into our workout, let's also focus a little bit more on warming up those shoulders that upper body, let's get into some small arm circles. And with these arm circles, I want you to spread your arms out to the side, really have tension through your arms, your chest, your upper back, and try to keep that tension as you draw little circles into the air here. And then those circles progressively get bigger as you're keeping that tension through your arms and your pecs as well. So really spread those fingertips out to the side and progressively get into bigger circles here. Nice. And then we're going to do horizontal abduction, abduction. We're going to activate those pecs and also the rhomboids, the muscles around the shoulder blades. So we are going to bring the hands together in front of us. We're going to squeeze the hands together just for like a split second and then drive them apart horizontally. So on that nipple line here and bring the shoulder blades together and try to squeeze those together and just go back and forth here. Squeeze at the front, squeeze at the back. Back and forth you go. Just trying to activate those pecs. Again, warm up the shoulders. Also the muscles on the back of the shoulder. Do a few more here. Again, about 10 reps. All right, and that wraps up our warm up. It's time to get into the workout. As I already mentioned, this workout will be a full body workout and you will at least need one of these resistance bands here. If you have free weights, that's perfect go ahead and use them. 
Here are the first two exercises. We're going to be doing four rounds of 12 reps each with a 30 second rest in between. So it's a superset. The first exercise is called the Z press. It's an overhead press that is really gonna target your core as well. Here's how it works with the resistance band. Pretty straight up, you just sit on that band. If I only had the band, I would probably opt for a thicker one. You bring that band up in front of you and we're gonna do a seated overhead press. You see I've got quite a bit of slack here in the center because I need that resistance here to make that overhead press challenging. And from here, we're gonna keep the core engaged. You can extend the legs out all the way if you've got that hamstring mobility, but you still want to be able to keep your core straight. You see here, chest is out, shoulders are back, my core is engaged and my lumbar spine, my lower back is straight. I keep the elbows in front of me at about a 45 degree angle, so you don't want to flare them out all the way to the side. And from here, we're going to get into a seated overhead press. If you use the resistance band, you'll have to get your chin out of the way and then you can push the head through again. That's what it looks like with the band. Obviously, if you're using free weights, let me just grab my dumbbells real quick here. I'm gonna be using those bad boys here. Then the setup is the same pretty much. Might be a little bit easier, not in terms of weight, but in terms of not having to get that chin out of the way. Again, I'm gonna sit up straight, elbows in front of me, 30, 45 degree uh, angle from the center. And then I'm gonna really engage the core as I'm driving up, control it on the way down, and then drive up again and really keeping that core engaged, the chest out. Um, you will notice as you sit, it makes it a lot harder to arch. Sometimes the problem with the standing overhead press is that people lean back and arch their back and the force drives into the lumbar spine. You can't really get that anterior pelvic tilt here in that seated position and it makes it a lot harder generally because you can't create any momentum from your lower body. We are going to combine this exercise with a lower body and core exercise on the ground going to get into a glute bridge position, which means you bring your heels in as close as possible here towards your butt. From here, we are going to bridge up. So we are engaging the core and we're engaging the glutes. So as you're on the floor, you're already driving your lower back into the floor and you're engaging your core. From there, you're gonna extend the hips, really squeeze the glutes together. No overextension. You don't wanna lead from the belly button. You wanna lead from the hip. Just lock the hip out. And then from here, we're going to keep that core engaged again. And we're going to march on the spot, but we're going to get onto the heels. So you see I'm pulling the toes up here and I'm marching on the spot, keeping those glutes squeezed, keeping the core on, marching on the spot. And we're trying to control that tempo. We're going to be doing 12 marches on each side. So 12 seated overhead presses, also called Z press. And then we're going to get into 12 of the glute bridge. Uh, glute bridge marches. All right, so that's what we're going to do. 30 seconds rest. So I'll keep an eye on the timer here as well. So set yourself up. Let's get into the first set. We're going to do four rounds of those. Set yourself up. And then let's get started. Off we go. Three, four, five. Keep that core engaged. Six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Put those dumbbells down if you use them. To be honest, if you have the resistance band, you don't have to really worry about it. You can just have it rest on your belly and get into that glute bridge position. Hips up, core engaged, onto the heels. Let's walk on the spot. The only touch points with the ground are your heels, your shoulder blades, and the back of your head. That's three, we're gonna go for 12, control it here. Four, five, core engaged. Six, seven, eight, nine, keep the core engaged. 10, last two on each side, 11, and 12. All right, rest up a little bit. You see I've got my water right here already. A quick sip and we keep that rest short. You can pretty much prepare yourself for the next round already because we're halfway through the rest period. We're gonna rest for 30 seconds, which means we have another 10-ish seconds left. So set yourself up, grab your dumbbells, 
all your resistance band. And let's go again, 12 reps here. Core engaged. Last two for me. And 12, nice, I'm putting the dumbbells down. Heels in towards the glutes, onto your back, lower back into the ground, onto the heels, core engaged, hips up, let's march. One, two, three, four. Keep your elbows off the ground, unless you really need to support and push through the elbows. But we wanna to try to avoid that, seven, Eight, core engaged. Nine, keep the hips up. 10, keep the balance as well. 11, and 12. Nice, 30 seconds rest. Your core is working so hard here as well because we wanna to try to stop the hips from tilting and shifting as we are uh, eleva elevating one of our feet, one of our legs, right? So we really need to work through the core to stabilize as well. Let's rest for a little longer, halfway through the rest period here. Another 10 seconds or so. We'll keep that rest short. One sip of water and we'll go again. All right, set yourself up. Keep in mind, chest out, shoulders back. Keep your core engaged, keep that back straight. If you've got mobility issues, if it's hard for you to keep it stable in that seated position, you can do this kneeling with your hips extended, squeezing your glutes, or you can just bring your heels in a little bit. That's gonna take some of the tension off your hamstrings. All right, let's get into it. 12 more rounds, uh, 12 more rounds. <laughs> no, 12 more sets, let's go. If you do it right, you really feel this work, your deep core muscles into the glute bridge marches. Let's go, 12 of those on each side. Keep those hips level, keep the core engaged. Three, four, five, six, halfway. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Last two on each side. Keep your core engaged. Squeeze the glutes. And rest up. Only a short rest period. You know the drill by now. 30 seconds of rest. Got another 25. Have some water. And then we'll get right back into the last round. Let me see if I have any other cues to give. I think that's pretty much it. You really just wanna make sure that you control that core. And it might even be challenging for you to keep the balance depending on how heavy you go and your mobility. You might even feel like it's, it's sort of throwing you backwards a little bit. Remember, it's always a consideration to do the whole thing kneeling, sitting back on your heels, or ideally on your knees with your glutes and your core engaged from here. Okay, let's get into it again. Last 12 of the Z press into the glute bridge marches. Let's go. Six, seven, eight. Ooh, my core, nine. 10, 11, and 12. Especially once you focus on that control on the way down, it really fires up the core. Let's get down on the ground, into those bridges. All right, heels in, onto your heels, core engage, up we go. Let's march. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Control the pace here as well. Eleven. Keep the core and the glutes engaged. That is twelve. All right. Rest up. Again, we're trying to keep the rest period here short, but there will be some inst instructions first. So that's gonna give us all the, the chance to catch our breath a little bit. All right, so here's what we're going to do for our second component today. We're going to do a split stance row with a bit of a modified grip. That's what the towel is for that I mentioned earlier. Um, I do practice jujitsu, and for those that want to look uh, to improve their grip strength, it's an interesting variation. Um, to the um, classic bent over row, dumbbell bent over row, kettlebell bent over row, or split stance row. We're going to be using a, uh, a towel in this case. Let me switch to heavier weights first though, because I'm gonna go to the full weight here, because I'm gonna be a little stronger on that bent over row than I was on the overhead press before. So let me just bump that up to the full Weight here, it's at least 52 and a half pounds. That's all I have here in the home gym. And here's what we're going to do. So I'm grabbing the towel, I'm gonna to wrap it up tightly. I'm gonna bring it around the handle of the dumbbell here. You can also do the same for a kettlebell. And then I'm going to get into my split stance row. Let me point out a few things to you. You already see how, let me bring this forward a tiny bit, how that front foot is in line with the handle and pointing forward. It's also pointing in line with the dumbbell. The rear foot is pointing out towards the camera, which allows me to open up the hip a little bit and to shift my weight onto that front foot, onto this leg here, so that I can post on that front leg. So my forearm is posting just above the knee. From here, you see I'm hinging at the hip and my spine is straight. So we don't want to be up here and rounding off. You want to stick your butt out. You want to try to hip at the, uh, hinge at the hip and then grab that band, uh, sorry, that dumbbell. I'll show you the band in a second. Low, and from here, we're just gonna row it in, keep the elbow in close. It's gonna feel funny if you do it with a dumbbell because it's gonna be a bit shaky as well. So it's a bit harder to actually stabilize and you will feel a huge difference in terms of um, the demand on your grip. Yeah, let me show you that resistance band variation real quick. Those people using that resistance band, you step into the band with that front and rear foot. You get into the same split stance. And now you have a couple of options here. You can just grab it like this normally, or you try to sort of imitate what we're doing here with the towel as well. So you grab it like this, and then hold it so that you've got a bit of a loop here at the top, right? You should be able to see that. And then from here, you're just going to row it in. And again, of course, you can use a thicker resistance band as well if you have. So. This is what we're going to do, exercise number one. Again, this will be a super set. So we're then just gonna get these uh, dumbbells, resistance bands, whatever we're using out of the way. We're gonna do 12 reps on each side of that split stance row. First on the left, then on the right. And then we're getting into 12 Spider-Man push-ups. With the Spider-Man push-up, it looks like this. Maybe let me go this way around. You might be able to see it a little bit better. Just make sure that I'm not gonna kick my Water glass, you get into that push-up position where you squeeze your glutes, you crunch your core, you have your hands underneath your shoulders. And as we are lowering down into the push-up, we wanna have that slight forward motion so that the chest comes down in between the hands, keeping the chest out, keeping everything locked in place. We're going to bring one knee or one thigh or quad up towards the elbow, right? So we're sort of having this slight crunch movement or if you do Muay Thai, that's how they're usually blocking the kicks on the side. So we're having this, mo uh, this movement or this motion in those push-ups. So I'll show you a few reps here. So I'm gonna go down on the right. Then I'm gonna go down or up, I should say, with the left leg. Up with the right leg, up with the left leg. If that gets too challenging for you, you can do the same thing kneeling. Again, squeeze the glutes here, have the core engaged, and do the same thing on your knees. If that is still too challenging, you can do normal push-ups and you can also do normal kneeling push-ups. All right, 
Those are the next two exercises. Again, we're gonna do four supersets with a short rest period, 12 reps of each exercise on each side, or I should say of the row on each side, and we're gonna split the uh, push-ups in half, actually. We're not gonna be doing 24 push-ups, we do six on each side, we're gonna do 12 overall. So, let's start with the row. So get your dumbbell, kettlebell, resistance band ready. If you wanna try this out with a towel, Set yourself up, give it a go. Otherwise, you can always just go for that normal conventional grip, that conventional handle. Keep that weight posted on that front leg. And let's go for 12 reps here. Off we go. Core engage, back straight, elbowing close to your body. You want to pull into that lat. Halfway. Nice. Once you finish your 12 reps, simply swap it over. Left foot in line with the dumbbell. Right foot goes back and points out to the side so that you're opening up the hip. You can see this perfectly now. I'm hinging at the hip. My back is straight. And then I'm rowing in towards the lowest rib, the bottom of the rib cage. Let's go. Control it. Ten, two more. Eleven, twelve. Woo. My sweat starts dripping. I get that dumbbell out of the way, and we get into the Spider-Man push-up. Remember again, if that's too hard for you, all you do is the conventional push-up or the kneeling push-up. All right, six on each side, twelve push-ups overall. Let's go. One, two, three. Four, nice. Keep it up. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Woo! Good job, everyone. We deserve that little bit of rest that we're going to take, which is going to be about 30 seconds, maybe 35. Have some water, catch your breath, and then set up for the next round. To all those trying the towel grip, I'm sure you feel the difference as well. It's a little harder to hold on to that weight because it's just a grip that you're not used to that much. Well, if you do actually practice jujitsu in the gi a lot, then you might be used to those grips a little more if you train a lot with ropes, slack pulls and that kind of stuff, or you're maybe a rock climber, then this will be no issue. Okay, let's get into the Split stands row, we go for our second round here. Two out of four overall. Set yourself up. Let's go, 12 reps. Once you've done your 12, just swap it over. I'll just turn so that you can see me rowing in case you need to check back for the, the right execution. Remember, open up the hip. My right foot is pointing towards the camera and let's go 12 on this side. Eleven and twelve. You will notice one thing here with the um, with the towel. The nice thing is you're able to row back a little further because usually if you have a dumbbell or kettlebell, your rib cage gets in the way, right? You're going to crush your ribs if you row it in all the way. But here with that towel, you can row and bring the elbow back a little further and get a bit more range through that latissimus dorsi. Okay, let's get into those Spider-Man push-ups. Down on the ground, let's get the dumbbell out of the way so I'm not going to hit my knee and let's go. Six halfway. Uh. 
and 12. Beautiful job, everyone. Get a bit of rest. Have some water. If you're completely puffed out and exhausted, well, you can hit the pause button here. I can't. We're gonna keep going with a 30 second rest period, but you can always take a little extra rep, uh, rest, sorry. But we wanna get in those, those reps. Wanna keep that intensity high. A couple of different energy systems we're hitting here, probably, but from that rep range and depending on your equipment, it's definitely a hypertrophy workout as well to build muscle, but we're also working on that muscular endurance, keeping the rest periods short, trying to push that lactic threshold a little bit, maybe depending on your fitness level, of course. But if you don't have a sweat on, you're probably not pushing hard enough. You might be able to go a little heavier. Okay, with that being said, let's get into it again. Round number three of that staggered stance or split stance, I should say split stance, bend, bend over row, set yourself up, three, two, one, let's go, 12 reps here, two, pull it in all the way, three, four, keep the rest of the body still, you don't want to bounce up and down, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, from 10 it gets hard here for me, 11, and 12, nice. Switch over to the other side. Again, point that rear foot out, hinge at the hip, post on that front leg, keep that core engaged. You wanna avoid that rotation as well. You really want to resist the pull of the dumbbell or kettlebell or resistance band through your core as well. Let's go. Eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Whew. It should feel like maybe you would have one or two, possibly three more reps in the tank, but you should really be pushing it here. You should feel exhausted, especially since we're approaching the last round, the last set in a few minutes. Should be really challenging. Let's get into the Spider-Man push-ups. Off we go. Keep that core engaged. Keep the chest out. Don't roll your shoulders in as you come down. Don't shrug your, shoulder, shrug your shoulders up. Ah, nice. Well done. Well, look, let me use that towel for a second for what it's actually made for. And it's wiping my sweat. All right, and then we put it back on the dumbbell because we will be going for our last set here in just a matter of seconds. Want to keep that intensity high here at the end. So set yourself up. We have another 10 seconds of rest and then we get it done. Finishing strong here. Set up boys and girls. Let's get it done. Last 12 on each side here. Three, four, five, six, keep it up. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Woo. Swap it over, quick transition. And on the other side, last 12, let's go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Beautiful, get your weights out of the way into the last 12 Spider-Man push-ups of the day, unless you want to do some extra after. All right, get into that push-up position. Remember, keep your core, your glutes squeezed. Keep everything strong and stable, chest out, shoulders down. Let's go. Ah! 
<laughs> Whew. Ah. Struggling on the last one there. Oh, good job everyone. Finish up your last few reps and that's it. We're gonna get into our cool down. Nice job. All right, for that cool down, just clear your training area. Get your equipment out of the way, make some space, and we're gonna cool down. All righty. Down onto the floor we go. Starting off in that seated position. We just really exhausted those pecs, triceps, the shoulders as well. So let's get into that seated chest stretch. So you're just gonna sit down, hands behind you, fingers pointing behind you, thumbs pointing out to the sides. You wanna to try to bring your shoulders into external rotation. So really open up the chest, bring the shoulder blades together, shoulder blades back and down. And then we're trying to really bring that chest, rib cage, belly button out in front of us and really arch back. Separate the top of the humerus, so the top of your arm from your sternum basically. Stretching out those pecs, the delts, you feel it in your biceps as well. Just then we really work those biceps as well in the row. We work the shoulders and the chest in that push up. So we're just gonna hang out here for a moment and just try to calm your breathing down as well. You can tell I'm still out of breath. All right, then from here, we're going to transition into the child pose. I mentioned the roll, and also it's gonna open up the, um, so we're stretching the legs and it's also gonna open up the shoulders. Bring you, so sit back on your heels, bring your knees a little further apart here so there's enough space for your torso to come down towards the floor. You're gonna walk your hands out in front of you, but you keep your hips back. So you wanna separate your hands and your hips, head or face down towards the ground. Try to bring your um, armpits, your nose, I hope you can hear me here with the microphone, armpit, the nose, the, um, the chest down towards the ground. And as I said, separate the hands and the hips. So walk your hands out, millimeter for millimeter. Try to walk them out a little bit further, keeping your hips back. Feel that nice stretch through your lats, but it's also just gonna open up your shoulders and your chest. Let's hold it for a little longer here. Nice, well done, all right. And then we're going to stretch the hip flexors. We did the glute bridge marches and lifting that leg up and controlling that movement, also keeping, as, you, as we're keeping the core engaged, definitely also targets the hip flexors. So just get into that half kneeling position, knee on the ground, my left knee is on the ground, I'm squeezing my left glutes and I'm bringing the left arm up and across, crunching slightly towards the right. Let me give you a bit more of a front view here, probably a little better. So left knee on the ground, squeezing the left glutes, then crunching towards the right, keeping my head in front of my hips here. And then you really wanna squeeze, focus on that squeeze, driving the hips forward as you're pulling across and also sort of bending to the opposite side slightly, but crunching forward, keeping the core engaged, sucking that belly button in, really targeting the hip flexors here. Then we change over to the other side, right knee on the ground, squeezing the right glutes, right arm up into the air, Grab the wrist. Again, I'm gonna to try to find an angle so that you can see what's going on. Grab the wrist. And then again, I'm squeezing my right glutes, sucking the belly button in, crunching towards the left here to the opposite side, the side of the front leg, keeping my head in front of my hips as I'm driving the hips forward. And just hold this here for a little longer. Nice, and then last but not least, it's also stretched out as adductors. So you're just gonna sit down on the ground. You pull your heels in towards your groin. You see I'm using my forearms or my elbows to flare the legs out. And I'm also using those grips here to roll myself in. So I'm bringing my chest out, the shoulders back so that I'm straightening my spine out. And then as I'm flaring the legs out, I'm gonna hinge forward with that neutral spine to really get a nice stretch through my hips through my groin, the adductors, play the legs down and try to keep that chest out, that spine straight. And that's it, that wraps up this full body workout, relevant for the general population, but also very jujitsu specific. Hopefully you had fun. If you did, make sure you drop a like and a comment and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next session. 
See you there.